basically we define it in my own way by saying that these are known sequences by the transmitter and the intended receiver, but which appears as random sequences to everybody else, right? It's a known native language to you and I, but they appear to be foreign languages to anybody else for which that conversation was not intended. Right? They're combined there to create the next bit. Right? So I just want you to keep the track of this. Let's, let's generate our own PN sequence, and then we'll extend this to the actual PN codes that are created in the CDMA standard or systems uh, around the world. So let's do T1. I'm going to start with the first one so you can see how this works, and then you'll, you'll generate the others. This one will shift out. This will quit a shift, shift out. This here will go to the last position. This here will go to the middle position. Now we combine one and three, the different modulo two of two different symbols is equal to one, right? When they're the same, it's a zero. When they're different, it's a one, right? That's for, for, for two symbols. So this is a one. Let me try the second one. T2, we shift again, zero, one, there's one there. These are different again, so this is one. Very good. I'll let you do the third one, go. One, 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 very good. T4, one, one, very good. Five, one, zero, perfect. T6, zero. One, zero, zero. Good, good, good. T7. One, one, one zero, zero, one, one, two, zero. Zero. And what's this? <laughs> it's the beginning. Right? It's the beginning. So we've created a periodic sequence. Right? I used to say that this was a cyclic sequence. But I was in uh, one particular country, and I presented this class. In the class, we had oh, 64 students. And I said, well, we've just generated a cyclic sequence. The class froze, and one very courageous guy raised the hand and asked, and asked me the question, Dr. Seymour, how can we have a psychic sequence. So, 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 so since that day, I'm, I'm not using cyclic anymore. <laughs> it's just a periodic sequence. <laughs> so you'll see a sequence such as C, I, T, go. One, zero, zero, one, 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 zero. And we're back to one, to the beginning. So if you were staying there, you'll see one zero zero one 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 zero one zero zero one 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 zero one zero zero one 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 zero. At what speed? The clock, the clock speed, right? And in CDMA, here's the first number I want you to remember. The clock speed is one point two two eight eight million chips per second, million triggers per second, right? So that's how you see these things come out. And this is a very important number. Second. Final little observation here, and then we'll move on to the next top, to the next issue. Let's do this. Class, what's T1? Zero. Zero? Zero. Zero. Good. T2? Zero. Zero. T3? And we get stuck there. So one lesson is that we should not have all zeros in the ship register because we get stuck in there, right? Let's, 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 let's extract some lessons out of this. Lesson one. What is the length of C, I, of T? How many chips there? Seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. C, J, of T, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? In theory, you expected eight, right? Two to the three, to the third. 
each box can carry either zero or one. So it's two to the three, it's, it's, it's equal to, to eight, right? But why seven? Because we don't have an all zero state, right? So this is the first lesson of all PN codes, the short PN, the long PN, that the maximum length of a PN sequence is equal to the two to the n minus one, right? N being the number of stages in the linear ship register. Here we have three stages, one, two, three. So it's two to the third minus one equals seven, right? And that's how we'll define the short PN and the long PN that we're using all these CDMA standards. I'd like to show you one thing. Uh, look at, count the number of ones here. Number of zeros? Number of ones? Number of zeros? We'll call that the balance property, right? Now, we can actually demonstrate that these are, that they behave like random sequences because we generated them. We need to show, in fact, that they behave as random because their balance, in other words, the probability of having a one and a zero is almost the same. If you have a random number, each element, each alphabet has an equal chance of appearing, right? If you have exactly completely random. Now, one, we have more ones than zeros because, of course, we don't have an all zero state. Right, so we basically are skewed a little bit towards towards the towards the one like that. It's almost like saying that if you really play a completely random game, it should be much harder to win the jackpot twice in a row than it is to win one time in a row. It should be even harder to win three times in a row than it is to win twice in a row. Right? That's very intuitive in a normal random game. If you look at that linear shift register that we created at the very beginning, if you just watch it, imagine seeing actually those chips, you'll see these arriving at the speed of 1.2288 million of these things every second. And when you get to 32768 class, what happens? We repeat. We repeat. Exactly. We repeat. We repeat. So if you, this is the actual sequence using commercial systems. So at the speed of 1.2280, 10 to the 6, it'll take 26.67 milliseconds for this to repeat. So this is now a periodic sequence with a time period of 26.67 milliseconds. Right? So every 26.6 milliseconds, that short PN code repeats. So when the mobile acquires the base station, it means that the mobile basically found the, this orbit, right? And it's running around that orbit with the base station exactly in sync, right? Let me give you, since this is a periodic sequence, let me give you a little question. Be intuitive in your answer. Let's say you have a friend who is running around a football track, a circle, and you're standing out there and you want to whisper a conversation with this guy. All right? What do you have to do? You have to get in the circle, chase after them, catch up with them, run alongside them, and talk to them. That's how the mobile talks to the base station using the short PN code, right? The base station is always running like that. And the mobile has to catch the, the, the base station and run with it and do conversations, right? Layer three messages. And then when the mobile is tired, it stops. Let the base station continue to run, right? <laughs> That's exactly uh, how this thing works. Yeah. So if we imagine now that there's 32,768 steps around this circle, do you imagine an athlete running around this circle at the speed of 1.2288 million steps per second? Don't take this guy, 26.67 milliseconds to go around this track every time. Now, to give you a reference, this guy started running on January 6, 1980, midnight, and he's still running. <laughs> That's the T0 of CME time, right? Universal CME time, GPS time zero, right? So all the time will be referenced to that point, okay? January 6, 1980, midnight.